Okay, so now we got a curve here. Now let's just define a position vector to the curve. Recap the previous sections. Position vector is a vector from the origin to the curve like that. Okay, which is simply the parameters and you put in the i, j, k components. So let's just say r, position vector r in terms of parameter t is equals to i component, y, t, j component, and x, t, k component here, the position vector. Okay, but we also know that we have shown that if we differentiate the position vector once in terms of t, we get the tangential vector. Am I not wrong? We get the tangential vector. So the position vector from here to here is like that. Okay, using the differentiating from first principles, if we differentiate it once with respect to t, not with respect to s, the arc length, we leave that out one side in a moment, we get the tangential vector here. Okay, so let's just do that, differentiate this once, and we will know that it's like that. Okay, then how do we relate the vector field to the first derivative of the position vector? Well, we know that the vector field in the context of the streamlines or in context of line of force gives us a vector that is tangential to the curve. Meaning to say that vector will be a constant multiple of this over here. Does that make sense? Okay, so what we have is that we, we got this thing over here, okay, and later we need to change this. So we have R1 T is equals to a scalar multiplier because the tangential vector, the velocity vector, goes in the same direction of the tangential vector, okay? The vector field, yes, the vector field, vector from the vector field goes in the same direction as the tangential vector. So we got this lambda times the vector f, okay? However, due to the parameter, we need to write x, t, y, t, and z, t. Not a problem at all. We, we take the parameter here, put the function inside here to get the x term, and then we can put the x term, the x value inside here. So this is what we got. Okay, so now writing that out fully, okay, we got this, which is this one would be x, sorry, differentiate x once, i plus differentiate y once, J, j plus differentiate z once t j and it's equals to a scalar multiple okay of this one over here okay now I'll, i'm going to keep it as this for a moment you'll see why in a minute okay now this one okay this is equal to this right now i can expand this out but when i expand this out i will get this one over here like that right which is why i kept it in this compact form because i don't take up too much space but it doesn't really matter because when this i expand out i get this Okay, I will then equate the i, j, k components multiplied by the constant lambda with the ones over here. Okay, I say it again. If this vector is equal to this vector over here, just like how the velocity vector is parallel to the tangential vector, okay, the velocity vector is parallel to the tangential vector, we just have to have the tangent vector multiplied by a scalar multiple of the velocity vector, okay? And then later when I expand this out, I will get something like this, okay? And then after that, I will then be able to equate the i terms and the i term over here. So let's just do it now. Lambda times into this one over here, right? So it's x differentiate once t, okay? Now I'm gonna equate the i terms with the i terms over here. So what is the i component over here? It's gonna be equals to lambda times, okay, f1. Okay, does that make sense? f1, which is this function over here. Bearing in mind that this, okay, is a function in terms of x, y, and z, not in terms of t. However, I will just write a general function like this, f1 over here, okay? You'll see why in a minute. So now I repeat the same, Differentiate once, uh, y once t, uh, put t inside, lambda f2, and then differentiate z once in terms of t, lambda f3. Okay? Just doing the same for the y, j component, and the k component. I'm just equating their, their, their component functions. Okay? However, this one is differentiate x in terms of t. Okay? And this one would be f1 in terms of x, y, and z. So t is not involved in this equation over here. 
Well, does it matter? Well, right now it does matter a bit, okay? But if I somehow manipulate the equations, I can somehow exclude the parameter t. Okay, look at this, differentiate x in terms of t, right? Equals to lambda f1, okay? Then differentiate y in terms of t is equals to lambda f2, okay? And then likewise differentiate z, differentiate z with respect to t is equals to lambda f3. Okay, we got these three equations over here. Differential equation is coming up, okay? So what I will do here is that I'll put the f1 down here and then I will put the dt over up here, rearranging just like high, how I would rearrange a differential equation, okay? And then I will just simply get dx f1 is equals to lambda dt, okay? After this, I can integrate both sides, okay? But I don't want to do that, okay? I don't want to do that just yet, okay? This is the one over here, and it's lambda dt. This one will be dy df2, okay? f2 equals to lambda dt. This one is dz f3 equals to lambda dt. Okay, so like I said, solving normal differential equations, I integrate both sides with respect to the variables over here, okay? However, I know that that is a bit tricky to handle because the dt is a bit difficult. So, given that this is the same, this is the same, this is the same, I can now equate them all by writing dx f1 is equals to dy f2, which is equals to dz f3. And that is our equation that we want over there. Okay? Now, this one, as you can see, the parameter t is already out. Okay, but how is this useful? It's useful because in solving for x, y, and z, I can isolate these two terms together. I can isolate this term and this term together. And I can isolate this term and this term together, integrating both sides with respect to whatever's on the top. Okay, and this is how we will go from the vector field to the line of force. Using this differential equation, using the appropriate one, and then integrating, okay? So now, here is a small clue or a small supporting statement, if you will, on your previous assumption that the lines of force, there are infinitely many because you are not too wrong if you know that. Why? Concentrate on this for a minute, okay? F2 dx equals to F1 dy. Integrate, integrate, correct? Now, after you integrate, you will get a certain value here, which I would just like call C1. And then down here, you've got a C2. What is it? The arbitrary constant, okay? You got this one, you got this one, whatever the integral is, okay? Then later, you can bring this one over the other side, and I will just write, is, you got an equation here, plus C0, uh, for example, where C0 is equal to C1 plus C2. Now, I will just combine the arbitrary constants, so we, uh, we just get one constant, which is C0. And then, the answer is that C0 determines what line we are choosing, okay? Because if C0 is 1, for example, the line is, goes like that. The line goes like that, like that, okay? It goes like this. And then if C0 is, is 1, the line is here. If C0 is 3, the line becomes here. If C0 is 4, the line becomes here. So there are infinitely amount of lines that we have. Bearing in mind, or if I'm, sorry, I'm skipping on using that phrase, um, taking note that this is only one of the uh, differential equation. Then the next one, we got this one over here, and then later we got these two over here. So there are altogether three arbitrary constants, and those three really pan spans out, so to speak, the space inside there, the infinite amount of lines. And that is why we are right in saying there's infinite amount of lines of force depending on the arbitrary constant. Okay, and there we go. How to turn a vector field to a line of force using that equation, okay? And the last note, the last note that I would like to stress time and time again, okay, because I believe that you should really um, get in, in line with this, that F1 over here, F2, F3, need not be only in X, need not be only in Y, need not be only in Z, to a point where you can even have, for example, stuff like this, or cosine Z, like that, okay? And then later, you, you'll, you'll be integrating with the respective terms, so you need to be careful about that, but F1, F2, and F3 can be anything in terms of X, Y, and Z. Okay, so I believe there's a lot of material today, but I believe it's a good 
jump, a good lead to what we're gonna tackle on next. Okay, we're gonna show you a practical example and some more things about vector fields.